Hello guys, welcome back to Node.js API Tutorials. In this video we will talk about repository pattern. We will cover what repository pattern is, its main characteristics that will explain why this pattern is useful, and we will refactor our API code to use repository pattern. The repository pattern is a structural pattern that abstracts and centralizes data access operations, provides a consistent and simplified interface for application to interact with our data sources. In essence, the repository pattern acts as a mediator or a middleman between the application's business logic and the data storage, shielding the rest of the code from the details of how data is fetched, stored, or manipulated. It encapsulates the data access logic, which can include querying databases, making API calls, or working with any other data source into a set of defined methods and operations. Key characteristics and benefits of the repository pattern include abstraction. It provides abstract layer for data operations, allowing developers to work with the data using high-level methods rather than dealing with low-level data access code. Centralization. Data access logic is centralized within the repository, making it easier to manage, maintain, and modify. Consistency. It enforces a consistent way of interacting with data across the application, ensuring that data-related operations follow the same patterns and conventions. Testability. The pattern facilitates unit testing because you can easily replace the actual data access logic with a mock data for testing purposes. Flexibility. It enables the switching of data sources or storage mechanisms without affecting the rest of the application. For example, you can switch from a relational database to a NoSQL database or an external API with minimal code changes. Now let's go ahead and introduce repository pattern in our code. In the SRC folder, let's create a new file called types.d.ts. This file will let us use types and interfaces without importing them in our code. Let's go ahead and define two types and two interfaces in this file. So first we're going to have a tour entity type and we have the following properties ID, travel ID, name, starting date, ending date, price. And then we're going to define travel entity. Again, ID, name, description, slug, string, number of day and tours. Now we're going to define interface, tour attributes. And again, we're going to have ID, travel ID, name, starting date, ending date, price, created at, updated at, and interface, travel attributes. Again, ID, name, description, slug, is public uh, number of days, tours, and created at an updated date. Travel attributes interface and tour attributes interface is what we're going to get back from the database or rather repository. And then travel entity type and tour entity type is what we are going to be returning in the API response. As you may have noticed, we already have tour entity type definition and travel entity type definition in our code. So let's go ahead and remove it. Let's go ahead to resources, tour resource, and let's go ahead and remove the tour entity. And let's save. As you can see, we didn't get any errors because this type is imported automatically from the types.t.ts file. Now let's go ahead to travel resource. And again, we're going to remove the travel entity from right over here. And we can also remove it from the import. And let's go ahead and save it again. We didn't get any errors. Now let's go ahead and use interfaces with the models. So right here we have a model and we can put tour attributes. And in travel model, we're also going to put travel attributes. Let's go ahead and save everything. Now in the SRC folder, let's create a new folder called repositories. And in this folder, we create three files. The first file will be base repository. The next file will be tour repository. And finally, we're going to have a travel repository. 
in the base repository, let's create a base repository class. We will use inheritance pattern where we put majority of the code in the base repository. And then we will use child classes that will maybe change some of the functionality of the methods of the base repository. So let's go ahead and export default abstract class base repository with a generic A attributes, right? And it will have a model class and will be model static that we imported from SQLize. And model static is basically a static model that will be a tour or a travel. And let's define in the constructor, we'll pass that model static. Let's go ahead and define a get all method and it will take options as a parameter, which are the options for the SQLize. And we'll check if option has property order. And if it doesn't, we're gonna use get default order by, which we will define later. So now we're gonna return this model class find all option with options. And the next function will be get by ID. And it will take ID as a string and again options. And then it's gonna return find by PK method of the SQLize which will take ID and options. And finally, we will define the get default order by. So we will return order created at descending. All the models that we're going to be using get all method on, we will be ordering by created at descending. Now let's go ahead and create code for tour repository. We'll import tour from database models. We will import the base repository. And we're going to do export default class to repository and we'll extend base repository. We'll have a constructor. We will pass the tour static model in the constructor of the parent class. And that will complete the code for tour repository. So tour repository will basically proxy methods, get all and get by ID to the base repository. Now let's go ahead and create a code for travel repository. This code will be a little more complex than the tour repositories code because travel repository will include tour repository. So let's go ahead and import tour, import travel, and we can do base repository from base repository. And we're going to export class travel repository, which extends the base repository in the constructor. We'll do the same, but we will pass travel model to the constructor of the base repository. And then get all method again with we'll pass options. The signature is going to be the same as the get all method of the parent class. And now we will insert includes when we'll use the method. These get includes and we'll define it later. Again, we'll just return a call to the parent class get all with options and get by ID. It will take ID and options. And again, we will get includes and then return the call to the parent class get by ID with ID and options. Now let's define the private method get includes and it's going to return include tour. So basically the same thing that we did with a travel model. Now we also need to update the code in tour resource and travel resource. As you can see, we're passing tour as a generic. However, we need to pass a tour attributes, right? So let's go ahead and remove the import of tour and pass the tour attributes in here. And the same in the travel resource. Let's go ahead the same instead of travel. We need to now pass the travel attributes. Let's go ahead and remove travel import and pass the travel attributes. As a final step of the refactoring, we need to update code in the controllers method. So let's go into routes v1 tours controller. And right here where we have const tour store resource collection and where we're calling SQLize model tour, we need to put the following code. We're going to be instantiating the repository and we're going to be using the get all method on that repository. So let's go ahead and import the tour repository. And then in a get tour method, we're also going to make some changes. Instead of calling find by PK method on tour model, we're going to instantiate the repository, tour repository, and we will call get by ID method on that repository. Now let's go to travels route. We'll choose a controller. We'll find the list travels method. Instead of travels, we're just going to instantiate the travel repository. In a get travel 
function instead of a find by pk call method on a travel model we're also going to be instantiating the repository and we will make a call to get by id method of the travel repository and this is how we can implement repository pattern in our node.js api project i hope you like this tutorial thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video